morning, everyone in Facebook land. Hello, hello. My name is Joy, and I'm the owner of SubRosaTea.com, and we are having a very, very special Mother's Day tea party here. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. If you are brand new to my videos, what's happening is I have a camera at eye level, and I have a tablet in front of me just out of your line of sight so I can see if you have any questions. So if you are here live, you will see a red above my head that says live. If you don't see it, it might be, all you need to do is tap the video and it will enlarge into your entire viewing screen. And if you see the live, feel free to ask questions. I'd love to know that you are here. So leave me a wave or a comment. And even if you're not here for the tea party, happy Saturday, happy weekend. We made it another week. Hey there, Monica. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. So we are going to be having a very special Mother's Day tea party. We're having, we are doing six different courses where I will be pairing our tea with food items. So I know that Mother's Day is tomorrow being Sunday, but I'm recording this now just in case, just in case you like some of this prep, some of these recipes, some of these items, that you still have plenty of time to gather them at your local grocery store and make them yourself. So as the recipes are available, we will go ahead and put them into the comments. We will also then be downloading this video from Facebook and transferring it to our YouTube channel, which, which will bounce back the video to our website. So if you are someone who's mother perhaps lives in a whole nother state and you just can't be together there is a way that you can definitely watch the video together because as you may know youtube is part of google so anyone who has an internet connection can definitely watch it on our youtube channel or also watch it on our website so monica just said that she's got lots of snow and wind because of the polar vortex good morning jamie thanks for coming i appreciate it so the very, very first course, I am having six courses for my Mother's Day tea party. And the very first course, I think we should get to steeping. So I've got my beautiful, beautiful teapot. Friends, I have been a tea drinker for an extremely long time, and you're going to see the majority of my china set if you watch the entire video. I happen to love yellow roses. And it's kind of funny. This is my china set. And it's, it's just kind of funny that I love yellow roses. I've loved them forever and forever. When I was about 20 years old, I realized that Joy, which happens to be my first name, and yellow roses are literally synonymous in the Chinese language. And I think that's just so incredible. So when I inherited this fine china set, I just knew it was meant to be. I absolutely love it. So I love an excuse to use my fine china. And of course, this is my, my beautiful teapot. And we're going to make some de jarling to, st to start this party up right. Now at Sub Rosa Tea, we sell approximately 80 flavors of loose leaf tea and all the tea that I'm going to be talking about, you can find it on our website if you care to make a purchase. You can make it at subrosatea.com, but we have a few things on our top shelf hidden web page. That top shelf hidden web page, we're going to tag that in the comments. And even if you just go to our regular website and use the search bar and top in, type in top shelf, you will be redirected to the hidden web page. So specifically, the very first tea I'm going to make today is Dejarling. Our darling Dejarling is literally known as the champagne of teas. It's a beautiful, beautiful black tea. Um, it's a little more on the rare side. It's not terribly common. And I'm going to steep up the Dejarling in a brew bag. If you don't know what a brew bag is, it's made out of cheesecloth and it has a drawstring. So this cheesecloth bag is fabulous if you're making uh, a big pot of tea and you don't have an infuser that's big enough. You want to make sure that your tea to water ratio is set right. So if you have yourself like a tiny tea ball and you can only fit a teaspoon of tea into your tea ball, but you want to make a full four or six pot 
uh, tea that's just not going to be enough room for the tea to expand. So I've put our tea into the brew bag and I'm going to pour the hot water over. I'm assuming that there are plenty of people out there who do have a china teapot like this and you just might not have an infuser that fits it, but you still want to use your china. So the tag here is just laid to the side and I'm going to steep up that Dejarling tea in my teapot. So when I have a party like this, I've done this in so many, so many ways, not just tea. I used to host wine parties. We would have six people. Each people would bring, each person would bring one bottle of wine and one course, and we would pair that particular wine with the tea. We typically did it where we had three, like maybe two bottles of white, two bottles of red, and maybe some dessert wines or vice versa. All of the courses would be light, which is exactly what I'm going to do today for our brunch. I am starting with some teas that do have caffeine, but I'm just kind of mixing it up a little bit based on how I would want to eat the meal and how what tea would be paired nicely for it. So I'm going to try to give you some recommendations. So this is Dejarling tea. Again, it's a plain unflavored black tea, but it has so much taste, so much great flavor. So black tea has approximately 60 milligrams of caffeine per eight ounce cup. But today, during brunch, we're not going to be drinking all the tea with caffeine, and we are going to be using my fine china teacups. I love them. Aren't they just so beautiful with this yellow rose, <coughs> the yellow rose design? And so a traditional antique teacup only holds three to four ounces of tea. So I don't want you to feel that your guests would be overwhelmed necessarily. And I feel like brunch can be luxurious, right? You're going to take your time. It's about who you're with. It's about the people. It's about the conversation. And even if you happen to do it for yourself, then it is about all the flavor, right? So let's make sure it tastes good. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Good morning, Amber and Stephanie. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And again, friends, I am using our brew bags. We sell these brew bags, four of them, in a package for only $5 over on our website. This is a great idea for when you are using a larger vessel and your steeping device just plain old doesn't fit. Now, like I said, Dejarling is known as the champagne of teas. It really is a beautiful, beautiful, fabulous cup of tea. In my opinion, you should be able to steep a high quality Dejarling, like what we sell, at least six times. Most, most days I get eight steeps out of it. The caffeine content will decrease as you steep it more often, but I think the flavor is fabulous throughout the day. So this one, I, I really do like this tea steeped awfully quickly. So, but while I'm going to let it steep just a few more minutes while I tell you about our very first course. So I think when we are having a fancy Mother's Day tea party, we should use fancy vessels. I'm actually, my very first course is a chilled soup. So I made this with cucumber, some chicken stock, um, olive oil. I did use some white wine, some onions and garlic, and I sauteed it all together, and then I cooled it down and chilled it. So this is my cucumber soup that I have, I am serving chilled. It's great when you're having a party to serve something that you can just literally pull out of the fridge. I made it the night before so I could clean up my kitchen before all my guests arrived. As you can imagine, as you probably heard, this has got an awful lot of depth of flavor in this chilled soup. So while I am serving a hot tea with it, I picked a tea that has great taste, but it's unflavored. So it doesn't fight with the chilled soup. Now an option with a chilled soup like this, I'm calling it more like an amuse-bouche. It's a tiny serving. We're going to serve it like this so people can literally drink it and not have to dirty another dish. But a fun chilled soup like this, I have got heavy whipping cream in here. You can pour a little heavy whipping cream on top. It floats on top. 
I happen to have these wonderful little Demitasse spoons and I can stir that heavy cream in and it just makes it taste wonderful and fabulous. And again, friends, this is course one on a bouge bouche of chilled cucumber soup. I think my Dejarling is ready to go. Now I do not like my Dejarling over steeped. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the brew bag out. Oh my gosh, you guys, it smells so good in here. I love Dejarling so much. It's just one of my favorites. Right now it's in limited edition. I don't know if Sub Rosa Tea is going to um, carry this for too much longer, but we've got it now. Um, and I, can you see this okay? It is a beautiful light brown colored tea, beautiful and hot. Oh, the aroma, the depth of flavor, you can just tell. It's got this big, beautiful, hearty leaf that makes this tea definitely one of my favorites for tea time. I'm going to set this aside and we will get to sipping. Hey friends, do me a solid favor. Now that I've got some people here, do me a solid favor. Tell me your favorite thing about spring. You got to leave me at least one good comment. Tell me, what do you love about spring? Miss Monica, who's watching right now, she lives in Maine and she got how many inches of snow, Monica? A ridiculous amount polar vortex, but there's got to be something that you love about spring. So share that in the comments while I get ready for the second course. Will you please? So the next course, I'm going to get just a little bit fancy because I think you can tell I'm in the mood to do that. So our next course I have made with a product from Rosebud's Ranch and it's called Dillylicious. Friends, I am a small woman to own business and I like to support my vendor friends, especially when their businesses align with mine. So her values are that everything is organically grown and she uses non-GMO products. And I wanna show you how beautiful this is. I don't wanna just show you the package. So I will be showing you multiple products produced by Rosebud's Real Food, and we are going to link um, her website. So if you want to place an order, you can also shop small and support another woman's own business. And of course, even if you can't um, shop right now, um, take a look at that spice drawer of yours. Do you have expired spices? Make sure you dig in there and throw those out and make yourself a list. So when you are ready to buy spices, you can buy them from Rosebud's Ranch. And make sure you uh, follow her on Facebook too. So the first recipe here is with Dillylicious. I love the flavor of dill. And the recipe is right on the package. This has got absolutely everything. It's not just dill in here. So it's got dill, salt and pepper, onions, garlic, cardamom, paprika, so, so many good things. And I want to show it to you. I'm going to try anyway to get it as close to the camera as I can. This is what the Dillylicious looks like. You can tell they use real food here. It is not just dried powdered junk. This is absolutely fabulous, organic, non-GMO, high quality products in this. And so the recipe for this dill dip that I am again serving into a fabulous teacup because it's so great. The dill dip, you would use approximately three quarter cup of Greek yogurt or sour cream and a quarter cup of mayonnaise. And this makes a really great dip. I love dill. Do you have one of these great things? I love this tool in particular. Don't wanna to make too much noise here on camera, but this particular uh, tool has got little angles. Can you tell as the camera focusing on it? It's wonderful. It's so, so easy to use and it's making like little chips. It's making chips and the chips have ridges. So when I am serving a cucumber with dip, I want the ridges so it can pick up more dip. Do you see what I'm saying? So I love this tool. I use it for everything. Obviously cucumbers are awesome. I probably wouldn't use it for tomatoes. I don't think they would hold up, but zucchini, squash, eggplant, the cucumber, carrots, celery, everything. If you're gonna have dip, definitely want to have it with some ridges. And again, we're serving it with dill dip. 
But I wanted to give you some other options because friends, I love dill. I love pickles. I love all the things. I really, really do. So one of my favorite things to do with the dill dip is make a salad dressing out of it. You got that right. I am a keto girl, which means I do not eat sugar, but I still love all the things. So one of my favorite recipes is I make like Big Mac in a bowl. Have you ever made that? So it's all the ingredients, all the layers of a Big Mac sandwich. Of course, no bread, but it's all in a bowl like a salad. Well, I love pickles, of course. So I make this dilly dip the way it is, and I'll put that into a bowl, and I'll whisk in some olive oil. On occasion, I'll even whisk in some white wine vinegar to it, and I thin it out a little bit, so it's more like a salad dressing, and it's absolutely perfect for my Big Mac in a bowl. So, I, again, I love dill. The other fabulous thing I like doing with this dilly dip is, do you know what a Cubano is? A Cubano is typically a sandwich that has pork, ham, Swiss, pickles and yellow mustard. So again, I'm a keto girl, so I'm not eating bread, but I can still layer ham and cheese, put a little roll of pork in, and a whole schmear of this dilly dip and roll it up. I just eat it all as a roll up. It's heaven. It's perfect. It has all the great notes of a Cubano sandwich with more, with more tanginess, more zest. And even though it's homemade, it tastes great. I crave it more than the Cubano sandwich that I've had from a restaurant. So course two, course two, we're going to get just a little bit of fanciness with our tea. So we've got our great, um, I need a saucer, I think, right? For this dilly dip, we've got our saucer, we've got our dilly dip, and we've got some wonderful cucumber chips. And this is how I would serve it. Now, I don't know about you, but typically when I have a dinner party, my guests are seated and they stay seated. But I can imagine that sometimes you want a party where they can travel, where they can mingle, where it's one hand and they have everything together. So this is my suggestion for course number two. But I am going to get just a little fancy with my tea. I think Dilly Dip needs some matcha. Who's had matcha before? Will you smash that heart button if you've had matcha yet? We've sold it for approximately a year now, but I know a lot of my customers are new and I respect that. So friends, this is what matcha looks like. This is matcha powder. It's this beautiful bright green and it is all natural, this color green. We don't add anything artificial to make it look this beautiful. And do, can you tell, can you tell that it's a powder? It's a very um, loose powder. I'm just trying for the camera to make sure I'm not a professional friends. I own a tea company here, but you know, camera and all that is not my forte, but I'm going to do my best for you. So this is, uh, it's very, very a fine light powder the way powdered sugar is, if most of you know what powdered sugar is. So I'm going to make a matcha tea to go with the dilly dip. Again, the dilly dip is very cold, and I love the dichotomy of, of a hot tea with a really vegetal cold dip. So I'm going to use approximately just little, a little bit. I'm actually going to go with our ceremonial matcha. I think I have a package somewhere for you. Oh, yes. So this is what matcha, the package, looks like. And we have it in flavors. We do. We sell raspberry, peach, chocolate. But this one here is called, it's referred to as ceremonial matcha. It's unflavored. It just has the flavor of the matcha. So I've got approximately a quarter teaspoon. It's a very small amount right into the bottom of this ceramic bowl. The ceramic bowl doesn't have any glaze on it, so it's perfect for this particular use. We are going to pour in just a little bit of water, and I'm going to use our bamboo whisk. We do sell these, by the way. We sell the matcha. We sell the bowl that I'm using and the whisk. We sell, oh, and the wooden spoon that you saw me use. Uh, it all comes as a set, a four-piece set. So we've got the matcha whisked in here. So then I'm going to make you some sencha tea. Sencha is plain green tea. You can make matcha just with water. You can but in this particular case, I'm going to make green tea 
instead. The unflavored green tea that we sell is called Sencha. It comes from Japan. I'm gonna pour a little bit of water. Actually, I'm gonna put this in a bowl just so you can see it better. Put the infuser basket into the bowl. Now, uh, with Sencha and with Matcha, I personally like 170 degrees. So it's not boiling water, it's not terribly hot. And we are going to steep it in just a little bit of water. The sencha, let me show you. It's a nice, beautiful, green, whole leaf. And it, it's uh, a, a very large leaf, a light green in color. Sencha is typically served in a fine Japanese restaurant. And so is matcha. Matcha is as well. Matcha is actually the whole tea leaf. So if you are a kiddo that doesn't eat their vegetables, you might want to consider adding matcha to your lifestyle because it has a lot of fiber. It has a lot of the antioxidants and the qualities that will help you with digestion. So here I am. I am steeping this sencha very, very delicately. I like sencha, again, only in approximately um, 170 degrees water and only like a minute and a half. Literally, that's what I like to do with it. And brewing instructions are right on the package. So if you are brand new to our tea and you've not had it before, the brewing instructions are on the package. I know a lot of people are new to loose leaf tea and I have done an awful lot of videos just based on that. So I just poured friends our Sencha green tea into the matcha. I don't know if you can see, I'll try to hold it up for you. I don't want to spill too much matcha. It's good stuff here. I don't want to spill too much onto the countertop while I'm messing around. But I've got this beautiful bowl of matcha. This is a, oh, it, it's so warm. It's so lovely. It smells so, so fabulous. This is exactly <clears throat> what I'm craving with dilly dip. Absolutely. Something light and bright. It does, by the way, if you didn't know, the very specific type of antioxidants that matcha have, it gives you an alertness, a really smooth alertness. So even though the caffeine content is relatively low, it will it will help stimulate you. It's a nice smooth energy and you should not get a drop off like you would with artificial stimulants. All right, let's move on to the third course. Friends, I am going to make something else for you right now. Who's ready for something sweet? I am going to make a chaffle for you. If you didn't know, our tea has no calories, no sugar, and no carbs. And that just happens to be the current lifestyle that I personally am living. If you are interested in a sugar-free lifestyle, you're welcome to join our group called Keto Tea and Me. I discuss more about um, recipes, more health information about the tea, and more recipes living a keto sugar-free lifestyle. But right now, I want something sweet. And just because I'm sugar-free doesn't mean that I can't have something sweet. So if you can't tell, I just plugged in my mini waffle maker. Before it gets too hot, I'll show it to you. Let's see. Can you see? So it's a mini waffle maker, and it's tiny. It makes one serving. <laughs> I'm okay with that. So my recipe is awfully pretty small. It, uh, we're going to post that in the comments for you. I am going to be making for you my cinnamon roll chaffle. This is the third course. So the first course we had a chilled soup. The second course here we just, oh, the first course was chilled soup with the jarling. The second course was dilly dip with cucumbers and matcha. And the third course that I'm having for my Mother's Day tea party is a cinnamon roll chaffle. So here we have my dry ingredients here. We have almond flour, baking soda, and of course cinnamon. Rosebud's Real Food sells this wonderful, wonderful cinnamon. It's called Salon Cinnamon, and I am completely obsessed with it. Nothing else will do for me. I love it. So this recipe uses the cinnamon in with the chaffle mix. So I've got my dry ingredients, 
and then some wet ingredients. I'm making a cinnamon roll chaffle. So you know it's got to have some cream cheese, some butter, and of course some wonderful cinnamon notes. So in this particular chaffle recipe, the cinnamon is in with the actual base, not the frosting. And I think that's, oh, I'm adding an egg. And I think that's also very, very true to um, regular uh, cinnamon rolls, right? The cinnamon is in with the batter. So this particular recipe, <clears throat> as, far as, I, as far as I recall, I haven't made it in a while, but this particular recipe is going to make two chaffles for us, which is two waffles. I'm using a funny word. It's called chaffle, and chaffle really just means egg and cheese. So if you have any kind of cheese in your refrigerator and an egg, you can make a chaffle. If you have a waffle iron, and I'll be honest, I like the waffle iron because it gives it a very certain taste, like a crispiness to it. I love the texture of a waffle, but this is batter. You could totally just put it in a skillet and make it like a pancake, if you know what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to divide this. I'm gonna put the, the batter directly into my waffle maker. <clears throat> going to hope that I don't overfill it too much. And it should cook. It's actually a pretty thin batter. Um, like I, so, as I was saying, a chaffle, friends, is cheese and egg, period. This one is a little more fancy. I've made them with cheddar cheese, mozzarella cheese, Colby cheese, pepper jack, of course. This chaffle calls for cream cheese. So it's definitely a very different texture if you're brand new to chaffles. Also, you can make them sweet, like here, that I'm doing with the cinnamon. I'm going to make a cinnamon roll chaffle because it's brunch. It's Mother's Day brunch, so of course I'm going to do that, right? That makes sense. But you can also do them with savory. I absolutely love a chaffle that has cheddar cheese and ham and chives. I've done a chaffle with a Reuben where I've cut up the meat and the sauerkraut and the Swiss cheese. It all goes into the waffle maker, and it really cooks up normally quite quickly. Um, about two minutes is typical. I think maybe two and a half to three minutes if you're doing something like um, a savory one where it has more ingredients. It's a thicker, fatter waffle. Hopefully I'm not going to lose the Wi-Fi connection because I've got my waffle iron close to my cell phone. I don't know. We're going to find out. We'll see. Anyway, I did not get to read. What did everyone say about springtime? Oh, I totally missed it. Friends, what's your very favorite? Thing about spring. Oh, flowers, porch time, absolutely all the good things, all the good things. So that chaffle is going to take just a few more minutes, I think, to bake. I'm going to have to keep an eye on it, but let's make another round of tea, shouldn't we? Okay, so this is our stackable uh, teapot. It makes two cups. It's dishwasher safe. And this teapot will keep your tea hot for two other hours. So if you are looking for a mommy gift, these teapots are absolutely fabulous. So it comes with the infuser basket, and that's going to go right in. And I'm going, now, again, I'm making a cinnamon roll chaffle. And I'm using Rosebud's Real Food Cinnamon in with the chaffle recipe. And I'm going to make up some of our cafe latte tea. Friends, this is a black tea. It has mate in it and coffee beans. You heard that right. I am literally making a cup of tea that tastes like coffee. But when I am thinking breakfast food, I'm 100%. I love the taste of coffee, but I can't have coffee. I actually have never been able to have coffee because coffee really upsets my stomach. And it wasn't until about eight years ago that I realized that the reason why that is, is coffee has a lot of acid. So sadly, this is my case, but I have a lot of customers who are coming up to me to say that they can no longer partake in coffee, that it's just, it tears up their stomach too much, and I feel for them. However, our tea called Cafe Latte, it's a black tea, so it has the caffeine just like coffee does, none of the acid, all the great taste, and it's tea. So it literally has antioxidants. It's literally good for you. So I like my cafe latte steeped in just two minutes. 
It is cafe latte. Of course it tastes like coffee. And of course you can drink it just as tea. But my favorite way, while I have the cream out for all the other recipes, my absolutely favorite thing to do with cafe latte is to make it as a latte. So I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. I'm going to check on my chocolate. Oh, it looks ready. Can you see that? I can't tell if it's right off camera. I'm sorry, friends. The cord is only so long. Let me set my cough, my my coffee tea. Let's set the cafe latte aside while I show you this. Oh, so beautiful. Let me unplug my waffle iron so I don't make a mess on camera. Okay, I think we're we're safe here. So this is what the cinnamon chaffle looks like. Again, it's in my Dash Mini Waffle Maker. I'm not a spokesperson for them, but I sure do love their products. And of course, because I am making a cinnamon roll chaffle, I am obviously going to put icing on it. So in keto land, in a sugar-free lifestyle, there are products that are sugar substitutes. I personally do not partake in them very often, but I do have them in my keto kitchen just in case I'm craving something sweet. So this is a cream cheese and butter mixture that goes to make the frosting. Have you ever made your own cinnamon rolls from scratch? It's not hard. It really is not hard. It's not a lot of ingredients and it's not hard. So it's very easy to also make this um, a sugar-free keto chocolate because I'm just using the sugar substitute and the brand that I use, friends, is called Swerve. And I used the regular sugar. We posted the recipe. We've made, I use the regular keto sugar. It's, um, it's a white sugar, just the way cane sugar is. They also make it golden, which is similar to a brown sugar. And they also make confectioners, which is similar to powdered sugar. So for the frosting, whether you're making a keto version or a traditional version, you would use powdered sugar in the frosting. And it's really just softened cream cheese, butter, and powdered sugar. You put that frosting on anything. You know the secret, right? You probably have all the ingredients in your house anyway. So this is my third course. This is part of our Mother's Day brunch. This is a sweet course here, a little chaffle. And again, my goal, friends, is not to get your guests terribly full or bloated or anything like that. We just want them to be happy. So I'm pouring out my cafe latte tea into my cup, and then I'm going to pour in some warm, heavy whipping cream. I'm just gonna give that a quick stir and you've got a wonderful cafe latte. A great tasting tea that does taste like coffee. Now the next course, we've got to get steeping. So the next course is our fourth course and we are going to be cold steeping our lemon meringue tea. Let me show you the package. Friends, this is our lemon meringue tea. It's got lemon and vanilla, and it's a green tea. And we're going to cold steep it. If we sell these jugs, the jug, the iced tea jug that I'm showing you, and of course we sell this tea. This particular package of tea, friends, makes five to six servings. And so does the jug. So it's already measured for me. The jug makes five, I'll make six cups. It's made out of glass. And it'll fit in your refrigerator. Now, if I were you, I would have just went to my sink and put cold water straight in. I just didn't want to leak the camera, okay? Nothing fancy, no trickery here. And again, friends, I am making our lemon meringue tea, and I'm making it cold for our fourth course. I'm doing six courses today because I'm being fancy. It's Mother's Day for a tea party, of course. So again, this jug, it's made out of glass, and one of my favorite things about it is it fits in the door of your fridge. So when you're cold steeping, you just set it and forget it. Normally what I do is I go make lunch. You know, whether I'm making a quick salad or a three-hour stew, whenever you get back to your cold steeped iced tea, it will be ready for you. This particular jug, we sell it both in black, white, green, and red, the red that you see, 
We also have it in a combo pack. Do you remember in the beginning of the video I told you about our top shelf hidden web page? It's a web page where I have specialty items and we put together a combo pack for you and it's called Fruit Tea Combo Pack. So you'll get the jug and four of our teas. Mix all the teas together, put it in the jug and you will have a fabulous, fabulous iced tea. <clears throat> so let's see. So, <clears throat> hold on, friends. I need a little sip of tea. So, again, here we are with our iced tea. Now, this particular jug, what you're going to see me do here is I'm making lemon meringue, and the next course is going to go great with lemon. So, I actually have some sliced up lemons, and I'm going to put them right in. So, think about the possibilities with this jug if you want to make fruit tea and you want to put your tea in here with frozen fruit or orange slices, mint leaves, lemon peel, anything that you want in with your jug, it all fits. So this jug acts, the lid acts like a strainer. So it's going to keep all the tea leaves here while I pour the iced tea in my cup. And I'm gonna set this aside just for a second so I can talk about our fourth course. So the fourth course, I typically serve this as a buffet style, that it's either something that you can pass to your guests and they can help themselves and assemble. I've got my fourth course here. Can you guess what it is? It's bagels and lox. So we've got our keto bagels, and I'll talk to you about those in just a minute. Capers and chives, red onion, tomato, and lemon. This is a great, beautiful display, something really easy to pass. So I wanted to tell you about these keto bagels because they are definitely Mr. Sub Rosa T's favorite thing that I make so far in my keto baking journey. When we started keto, we just gave up everything. We gave up every big good and I didn't even try. It was just pointless. We were trying to get our calories down and stick to keto. But eventually I decided to add some things like this back in. So we do have, um, we're gonna pin the keto bagel recipe because I've tried probably eight of them and this is the one that works for me. This is the one that I like the most. Also, can you see how great this is, friends? What is on top here is Rosebud's Real Food Everything bagel. This is amazing. This bagel I am, I love it for brunch, but this bagel with the everything bagel seasoning is my absolute favorite pizza crust too. That after I make the bagel, I just slice it in half, load it up with pizza toppings. So it, again, it's everything but the bagel in the seasoning. So it has all the things, garlic, onion, salt, sesame seed, black sesame seeds, poppy seeds, friends. This is the way to go for sure. So this particular everything bagel, it's a keto style bagel. It only has like five ingredients. The funniest thing, the main ingredients are mozzarella cheese and egg. And you're like, how could that possibly turn into a bagel? I have to tell you, it's really easy and it does because you add almond flour and baking powder. And there you go. It's that easy. It's a very interesting recipe. I happen to have a bagel silicone mold, but you could definitely bake them in parchment paper. Um, I made them uh, wider and thinner because I like that taste and I like it to be a vessel. You could definitely make them smaller if that's your prerogative. So here, once again, a bagel makes it into my keto lifestyle with bagels and lox. And I'm just going to show you kind of I'll show you the end result here. So when I make it myself, if you've never done this, can you get smoked salmon where you live? Um, it is definitely prevalent in my grocery store nowadays, but it didn't used to be. Um, but it is now. So when I layer it, I use a flavored cream cheese. Nowadays, you can buy whipped cream cheese that has chives and onions in it. So I always use that flavored whipped cream cheese on the bottom. I layer the diced onion and capers into the cream cheese. So when I pick this up, it, they don't fall off and just go everywhere. And of course, I've got my smoked salmon and some tomato. Now, in my particular opinion, this doesn't look right. That tomato, 100%, needs some salt and some pepper. And uh, I know that this is very, it's a common dish, very common 
in Jewish culture, and it was not common in my household growing up. I'm Italian, Catholic Italian, so I've never, I didn't have this until adulthood, so I don't even know if I'm making it right. All I know is why I do like this so much with a little pinch of lemon here. Why I like this so much is it's umami. I talk about umami all the time. That is what tea is for me. A good, good, good cup of tea hits every single taste bud on your tongue. You know how rewarding a cup of tea is. And this specific dish is that for me as well. It's got um, like that starchy, carby taste to the mozzarella. It's creamy. It's salty. It's a little smoky. It's tangy. It's sweet. It's all the things on a plate. And to me, I cannot have Mother's Day brunch without it. So again, so this is the fourth course. And my fourth course, before I take this away, my fourth course, I wanted to show you what's rocking and rolling. We've only been talking just a few minutes. The tea will get definitely um, a darker shade of green as you let it steep more. And we are making up cold lemon meringue. And oh yes, I will drink all six cups of this myself. Yes, I will, no problem. But this particular lemon meringue tea, I think on Mother's Day, it requires a fancy goblet. So I will be using my white wine goblet. And as you can see, this jug is straining out all of the tea leaves and the fresh lemon slices that I added to my jug. So this is a very, very light green tea. It is very low in caffeine, but high in antioxidants. And as you saw here, I squeezed a little bit of lemon onto my salmon. So this tea is the absolute perfect accompaniment to my fourth course. We've got two more courses, friends. Are you still hungry after all this time? I sure am. I could do two more courses. What about you? As you can see, since I'm using my, my fine china, I've used all the smaller plates. So we're not going to fill up our gas between courses. <clears throat> Next course, we're gonna do some more cold steeping. Who's ready for some bubbly? Oh my goodness, if you've been home for the past eight weeks, I have to assume your Mother's Day is going to rock and roll and it should include some bubbly. Am I right, friends? You know who you are. I'm going to cold steep our blood orange mango. This is green tea. And the package that I just showed to you is our two serving sample size. The bag is like exactly the same uh, diameter as a filter paper. So I am using a filter paper for this and I'll show you why. We sell all kinds of steeping devices on Sub Rosa Tea and you can find them on the tea accessories page, but this is called a filter paper. A filter paper, it's got a pouch. So it's like making your own tea bag. And this would be my tea accessory of choice because I'm going to put it into a champagne flute. Who's gonna guess what we're having next? You better believe it. So I am pouring in cold water. Again, friends, I'm cold steeping, okay? I'm cold steeping, and I'm cold steeping the blood orange mango tea while we talk about the fourth course. So we've got our champagne flute, because I'm gonna make a cocktail, and we're gonna talk about the fourth course. This particular course is one of my favorite things to make. Can you tell what it is? Can you see? It's got all those beautiful colors, beautiful shapes. I'm gonna to try to make sure it doesn't slide off the plate in front of the camera. So I have a very large muffin tin and I pressed into the muffin tin black forest ham on the bottom. Hold on, I need another sip of tea. So into the large muffin tin, my muffin tin makes six, which is, as you can tell, I'm doing everything in sixes today. It's just the way it, it fall, fell into place. So I've got my large muffin tin where I pressed in the black forest ham nice and cold. I did purchase this from the deli section. So it's thin, but not too thin, but it's not thick the way you would if you bought an entire ham hock. <coughs> so inside the black forest ham, on the very bottom layer, I have a layer of sauteed mushrooms. I always do mushrooms with this particular recipe, 
and I sauteed the mushrooms in with shallots and garlic on the stove top in a really big pan and the mushrooms are diced finely with shallot. Do you remember, am I the only one who loves Julia Child? In Julia Child's very, very first episode, I'm pretty sure anyway, in her very first episode ever on television, she was such a pioneer. But she was also her own person. She didn't change her personality to fit TV. She was, what, six feet one, I think. And she just had a larger than life personality until the day she died. And on her very first episode, she looked into the camera and showed everyone what a shallot was. And she said, ladies, you go to the store. You find the grocer. You tell him you deserve a high quality produce you get him to deliver shallots to the store for you. And I thought, boy, that woman, right? Yay. She really paved the way for so many of us. I didn't know what a shallot was the first time I saw that episode. Granted, okay, I'm in my 40s. I wasn't there for <laughs> her first episode. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't there. But when I first saw it, I didn't know what a shallot was. If I had seen a recipe in a cookbook, that said shallots, I wouldn't have known what section of the grocery store to go find a shallot. Thank God for Julia Child. So in case you didn't know what they are, I'm showing them to you. They're fabulous. They're kind of like a mix between our garlic and their onion, but they really are their own thing. And they definitely belong in this recipe. So again, first layer here, friends, we have the ham, we have sauteed mushrooms. Oh, let me cut this in half. I have a knife. I'm going to cut this in half. So after that, in the muffin cup, I then layered uh, sautéed spinach. Now, we love spinach in our house, so that's what I always do. And for me, this is brunch, but I think vegetables belong at brunch. Maybe not at your house, but they do at my house. And, and then the egg, okay? The egg is on top. Now, again, I happen to love the presentation of a set white. I do not like the white to run. You do you, whatever you prefer, but they go into the oven and they bake as a cup. And that's how I got the ham molded and really crispy and acting like its own vessel here. So we have uh, the layers. Uh, and I love a runny yolk in this particular presentation. If you want it set more, bake it a little bit longer. I like the runny yolk to run all over the spinach and the mushrooms and the ham, but you could also do a scrambled egg and bake it and bake it on top. You could omit the spinach. You do whatever. Really, this is also a good one to do with a very, very thin potato if you don't like mushrooms or perhaps cheese, obviously, right? Cheese on top, cheese inside, cheese wherever you want it. This is also a really great dinner. Yes, it's it's brunch food in, in, in our house, but it does make a really good dinner as well. And you could obviously serve it with a potato. Again, we're a keto lifestyle, so I would do probably a different vegetable on the side, like asparagus. I think asparagus and eggs are great. But this is our fourth course, our egg and cheese cup. And we have our cold steeped blood orange mango. So as you probably do you remember, I did a whole two servings of blood orange mango. And then I did approximately two tablespoons of water in my flute. So this is very, very concentrated. It's very full, robust. It's more tea than I would have used if I was just having a cup of tea. So I'm going to discard the bag. And uh, we are going to, of course, have some champagne. Lucky for me, we have little bottles of champagne at the grocery store where I shop, so I can indulge and not feel, uh, you know, not feel guilty about that. So you pour in the amount of champagne that makes you happy, and the blood orange mango, when I make a mimosa, especially on Mother's Day for brunch, I always add in just a tiny pinch of pineapple juice, and that's my preference. So this Happy Mother's Day to all of you. I see Trina's watching who has six children. She's a saint, isn't she? I hope you get one of these blood orange mimosas on Mother's Day, sweet lady. I hope you do. Miss Trina does all of my keto baking for me when I can't get around to it. 
Uh, Trina is the owner of Homestead Kitchen, which for those of you who are watching in Michigan, make sure you find her Facebook page. I don't know her address right off the bat, but she has been both keto and not keto baking for quite some time, and she is the proud new owner of a bakery. So for those of you who are keto, you can go into her bakery, and she's got amazing cakes and cookies and all the things, all the wonderful things. She inspires me every day. So thank you, Trina, for watching and coming to the Mother's Day video. Oh my goodness, friends, we have one more course because what would a Mother's Day tea party brunch be without strawberry jello salad? Let's get, let's see if I can bring my kettle up to a boil one more time while I show you. Let's see. Oops, yes. So I have an electric tea kettle and that's right off camera. So I'm not using a kettle on my stovetop. I actually have all of my other food display items on my stovetop right now. I have an electric tea kettle and they bring the water up to a boil very, very fast. And my kettle is actually programmable. So I can do it at 150 if I just wanted hot chocolate or, oh, I don't have enough water. Hold on, friend. So this electric tea kettle should come up to a boil awfully fast. And like I said, it's programmable. So it'll do 150, which is nice for like oatmeal or cocoa. Um, it's, it does the 170 for the green tea and matcha. It does boiling, all really. And it'll keep it warm if I program it to do so. So I'm pretty happy about that. So back to, oh right, I totally forgot. With the egg cup. The thing that makes the egg cup so special in my mind is the sassy salt. I really think Rosebud's um, sassy salt is spot on for everything protein in my life. So between the ham and the egg, it got a good dose of sassy salt. And if I was just making spinach by itself, I would have added that too. But because I was layering the flavors, I just did a pinch of the sassy salt on top of the egg and I totally forgot to tell you. So again, Sassy Salt has all kinds of good stuff. It is produced, again, by Rosebud's Real Food. It does have salt and um, onion and some garlic and some pepper and some dill. It's got amazing flavor. And so when I'm doing eggs, the Sassy Salt 100% of the time. So moving on to our final course here, we've got our strawberry salad. Now, typical strawberry salad, if you're not familiar with that, friend, it has a pretzel crust. Pretzels have starchy carbs, which I do not eat, but it's a very easy fix to make this a keto recipe. All I did was use crushed pecans instead of pretzels. So the pecan layer here has crushed pecan with melted butter and some keto sweetener, which I then baked to make sure it was solid. I whipped up some cream cheese and heavy whipping cream with again a little bit of keto sugar. And then I have my fresh sliced strawberries in sugar-free jello on top. And friends, we have got a new item for you. Have you seen this before? I bet you haven't because it's new. We just got them in. This is our brand new to Sub Rosa Tea glass double insulated flaming mug. It is absolutely perfect for what we are going to do with it. Let me find my balloon. And because I am making strawberry salad, strawberry jello salad, I'm going to steep up a strawberry bloom. We sell blooming teas. We have 15 flavors of them. And a blooming tea, friends, it starts out like this. This is what the pod looks like of a blooming tea. It's actually green and white tea leaves. You're gonna drop drop your pod directly into your mug. If you didn't hear it, my kettle just came up to a boil, and I'm going to pour boiling water over it. And I'm gonna let that rock and roll. Is that down too low? Do I need to prop that up? Let's see, what can I do? Can I do this? Is that better for the camera angle? <laughs> So here we are. This is our blooming teapot. This particular 
mug is new to us and it has a bamboo lid okay so the bamboo lid is here oh i did the wrong thing oh i can't believe i did that uh oh what am i gonna do it's boiling hot i think we're just gonna have to rock and roll with it i wanted to show you the infuser basket oh goodness oh well this mug in particular comes it's a three-piece set so that's why we're calling it a set so it has the mug it has a glass infuser basket for loose leaf tea that normally you discard to put the bloom in and then it has the bamboo lid so the bamboo lid, our blooming tea is already rocking and rolling. And Karen just said that I called this a salad, but it's dessert. I don't know. I have a hard time with it. It's got so many ingredients, so many layers. I feel like it's called jello salad, but maybe not, right? It's dessert for sure. But the important thing here is I wanted to tell you, have you made jello before? I think everyone's made jello at least once, right? You buy the packet, the powder, and typically you use boiling water. Okay, you you put boiling water over the packet of the Jello mix and you whisk it in until it dissolves. But there's absolutely no reason in the universe for you not to use boiling tea, right? Make some tea. Use that opportunity to have depth of flavor. So in this particular case, I used our cranberry harvest tea. I would have also used the pomegranate apple tea. I, it has so many other flavors in it, and it really bounces well and plays well with the sugar-free strawberry jello. And if you're making this yourself, use any kind of jello that you want, but I use strawberry jello, and then I put the cranberry tea in. But you could have flipped it. I think they sell a cranberry jello. I'm not really sure. We also have a strawberry moringa tea that if you wanted to stay with the strawberry flavors, you could absolutely have used our strawberry tea. Steep it completely and then make sure the steeped tea is then brought back up to a second boil. I think the jello type powdered product needs boiling water in order for it to dissolve properly. So if it's been sitting and steeping for five minutes, it might be a little too cool to dissolve the jello. So again, that's just a tip, a recommendation in order to be able to rock and roll this guy out. So here I'm looking at the blooming tea, if you haven't seen it. So the blooming tea is here. And friends, this is our brand new insulated blooming tea mug. It makes 15 ounces. It comes with the infuser basket and the bamboo lid. So I'm literally making a strawberry blooming tea, which is so fabulous for Mother's Day, inside this beautiful, beautiful mug. So the infuser basket, obviously for loose leaf tea, which is primarily what we sell, but we have 15 flavors of blooming tea. And in this case, I'm going to tell you why I am absolutely using a mug that's only 15 ounces. It's perfect to make blooming tea cocktails. Every time I take the lid off, I get this huge whiff of strawberry. I cannot wait to drink this tea. I'm so excited. So um, so this one is strawberry, but it makes it extra concentrated. Do you see, just like when I did our mimosa, I did it a very extra concentrated amount of the blood orange mango in with a little bit of water to make sure it's extra concentrated when I added the champagne and the pineapple juice. I didn't want it to be watered down. I want it to be very flavorful. So that's exactly what we're doing here with the blooming tea. We're making it extra concentrated that if you decide to add something else to this to make it a blooming tea cocktail, then the flavors are concentrated, which is another great reason why I like this mug. So my little strawberry blooming tea is hanging out and steeping. Normally, friends, a blooming tea takes about five minutes. So while we are here, just to review, we did a cold cucumber soup, a mamouge bouche, served in a beautiful cup. So your guests don't really even need the spoon. They could just take a sip with our Dijarling tea. The second course was our dilly dip, our dilly dip is here. Our dilly dip with Rosebud's Real Food Delicious dip that I'm serving with crinkle cut cucumbers. That was course number two with our 
matcha green tea that I whisked in our ceremonial matcha bowl with both matcha and sencha green teas. That was course number two. Our third course was a, our cinnamon chaffle, which is a keto cinnamon roll here that I served with cafe latte, and I made that tea into a latte. Our fourth course was our salmon bagel. Our bagels and lox, our salmon bagel with our lemon meringue, cold steeped green tea here in our white wine glass. Our fourth course was our ham and egg and spinach and mushroom cup that we served with our blood orange mango with pineapple and champagne mimosa. That was our fifth course. And then our very last course here, ending with something sweet and delicious, something that can easily be made in advance because it's a chilled dessert. You can serve it in any type of vessel you like with our strawberry blooming tea. And again, we've got our blooming lid here. It is steeping up. Let me see. Can I bring this up to the camera? So you can see how beautiful the bloom is getting. And it really should have been in another half inch of water because you would take out the infuser if you're making your blooming tea. Oh, thank you for joining me today, friends. I appreciate you sharing your time with me during our special Mother's Day tea party. If you heard or saw anything that you um, would think your friends would like to hear, feel free to share the video. If you are watching this on the replay, please use the hashtag replay. We hope that you will try some of our tea and recipes at your house and share, share with me some photos. We've got a fabulous Facebook group called our Top Shelf Club. We invite you to join our group. We'd love to see the photos of your tea party celebration. Thank you friends for watching. No matter what you do with the rest of your day, have yourself a cup of tea and take care of you. Bye-bye friends.